Hello everyone and welcome to Brain Blitz Audience. Today, we'll be looking at some previous year questions of the VIT IEEE examination. Now this examination has five subjects within it. Physics, Chemistry, Mathematics, English, and Aptitude. So today we'll be looking at some questions from all of these subjects and how to solve them. Are you ready? Let's start off with our first question, which is from physics. Two beams of light will not give rise to an interference pattern if A, they are coherent, B, they have the same wavelength, C, they are linearly polarized perpendicular to each other, D, they are not monochromatic. So, how do we solve this question? Well, let's eliminate them. The question says two beams of light will not give rise to an interference pattern if one of these conditions apply. So the definitive word here is not. Now, if you look at the options, you can see that option A, they are coherent, meaning, meaning from, the, from a similar source, then they, are, then they do give rise to an interference pattern, so option A is incorrect. Option B, they have the same wavelength. Same wavelength means you have a clear pattern of interference, so option B is incorrect. Option C says they're linearly polarized perpendicular to each other. This means they have the same phase difference throughout. Phase difference represented as phi. Now, if that is clear, if that's happening, then they do have a clear interference pattern. So option C is also correct. The right answer is option D, they are not monochromatic. So two beams of light, if they're not monochromatic, will not give rise to an interference pattern. Now, why is that? Now, a monochromatic source of light, if two sources of light are monochromatic, then that means they have the same wavelength. That means if they're not monochromatic, then they have different wavelengths. Now, if you have different wavelengths of light, then that means they interfere at different thicknesses. which means you will not have a clear interference pattern. So therefore, option D, they are not monochromatic, is the right answer. Let's look at the next question. This one is from chemistry. CH3CH3 plus HNO3 in the present at 673 degrees Kelvin gives us which of these options. Now, CH3CH3 is ethane, which is an alkane. Now, an alkane is when all of the carbon atoms are bonded with single bonds. So it's a saturated hydrocarbon. HNO3 is nitric acid. Um, and we have four options to choose from to, be, to as to which is the product. Now, if you look at it, alkanes are harder to nitrate but they do have a process which is called vapor phase nitration. Now, why is it called vapor phase nitration? Because HNO3 at 673 degrees Kelvin creates fumes. And that's why it's called a vapor phase nitration. Now, what's the unique thing about vapor phase nitration? In vapor phase nitration, um, Due to fuming, first of all, there will be cleavage of the carbon bond, the carbon-carbon bond. And also in vapor phase nitration, you usually have a mixture of nitroalkanes seen in the product side. Now that means the product side should have two different nitroalkanes. At least. If you look at option D, there is no nitroalkanes present. This is basically ethene, which is an alkene, so that's incorrect. Option C is incorrect because it's, it's, it is basically two atoms of the same compound, which is a nitroalkane. So option C is incorrect. Option A is CH3CH2NO2, which is also one nitroalkane, not two different ones. So therefore, option B is the right option. CH3CH2NO2 plus CH3NO2. Now, if you look at it um, as a skeletal reaction, 
then you would feel that this doesn't work. However, it needs to be the reaction needs to be balanced in order to um, in order to see that you need you would get these products as its product from the reaction. So therefore, option B is the right option. Now let's look at a question from mathematics. If a bar, b bar, and c bar be three unit vectors such that a bar cross b bar cross c bar gives you half b bar. Here we are assuming that b and c are non-parallel. We're given that theta 1 is the angle between a and b, theta 2 is the angle between a and c. Then we need to find out the values of theta 1 and theta 2 from the given options. So how do we solve this question? If you look at the reaction that we got, a bar cross b bar cross c bar, this left hand side is an example of what we call in mathematics a vector triple product. Now in a vector triple product, um, if you have if you have you know three vectors given as a vector triple triple product, um, they turn out to be a bar dot c bar in the bracket and b bar outside minus a bar dot b bar in bracket and outside of that c bar. So this is how the vector triple product would work out for a bar cross b bar cross c bar. So now let's write this reaction with the vector triple product. So that will be a bar dot c bar times b bar minus a bar dot b bar times c bar equals to half b bar. Now inside the brackets you have what we call a dot product in vector algebra. So the dot product can be expanded like this. So if you have two vectors a and b then their dot product would be modulus of a times modulus of b times cos of the angle between them which is represented as theta. Now between a and c the angle is theta 2 between a and b in the question the angle is theta 1 so when we rewrite this equation we get modulus of a multiplied by modulus of c multiplied by cos theta 2 inside the bracket and outside you have b bar minus modulus of a multiplied by modulus of b multiplied by cos of theta 1 inside the bracket Outside it would be C bar, and then the right hand side would still say the same, which is half B bar. Now, um, if you look at the question, you can see that A, B, and C are unit vectors. Now, what does a unit vector mean? It means that modulus of A equals to 1. Now, A, B, and C are all of all of them are unit vectors, which means modulus of A equals modulus of B equals modulus of C equals 1. So applying those values in the bracket, modulus of A multiplied by modulus of C gives you 1. Modulus of A multiplied by modulus of B also gives you 1. So the equation now becomes cos of theta 2 times B bar minus cos of theta 1 times C bar equals to half b bar. Now if you look at the equation we can rewrite it the right hand side as half of b bar minus half of c bar. I mean minus zero of c bar. Now let's rewrite that instead of half it's zero. So half of b bar plus zero times c bar. Now when we equate coefficients, cos of theta 2 equals 1 by 2. Now 1 by 2 is the same value as that of cos of pi by 3. Similarly, cos of theta 1 equals to 0. Now it's technically negative cos theta 1 equals 0. We put the negative sign to the right hand side it still becomes zero so cos theta equals zero that's theta one equals zero which is the same as cos of pi over two now that means theta one equals to pi by two 
and theta 2 equals to pi by 3. That means option C turns out to be the right option. The other options are incorrect because either one of the angles is incorrect or both of the angles are incorrect in the other options. Now let's look at the question for English. Complete the sentence in the following questions with the most appropriate choice. I can write with dash hat. The options are two, three, both, or either. Now hand is singular. So we need to put the modifier as something that would work with the singular form of the word, which is hand. If you look at options A and B, two and three, both of these require, both of these are plurals. So basically the noun they modifier would also need to be plural. So therefore, uh, options A and B are incorrect because you cannot write, I can write with two hand or I can write with three hand. You have to use hands for both of those examples. Option C says both. Now both uh, in the question basically means that uh, the term both usually means you need to have two things acting together. So using both your left and right hand, you're writing together. That's what it means. So again, this leads to being plural. Both is used in a plural sense, while the, the noun at hand is singular. So option C is also incorrect. The right option is option D, either. Now, in, now when we use either as a modifier, you have two distinct alternatives to choose from. Now, of course, there's another similar word, which is called every. Every is for when you have more than two alternatives. However, the term either is used for two distinct alternatives. Now, for of course, most, most people, you have a left hand and a right hand. So if you can write with both hands, that means you can write with either your left hand or your right hand. So using either with the singular form works. So option D, either is the right option. Now let's look at the final question for today. This one is from aptitude. Select the number from among the given options that can replace the question mark in the following series. 3, 10, 24, question mark 73, 108. The options are 37, 45, 52, 32. So how do we solve this question? Well, in the number series, the first thing you always do is find the difference between the terms. So 10 minus 3 gives you 7. 24 minus 10 gives you 14. Of course, you cannot calculate for the question mark. And 73 plus 100, 108 minus 73. If we compute that, 8 minus 3 is 5, 10 minus 7 is 3. So therefore, that's plus 35. Now, if you look at the differences we have, plus 7, plus 14, plus 35, they're all multiples of 7. So basically, the difference between the terms can be defined as increasing multiples of 7. Now that means 24, the question mark minus 24 would be 3 times 7, and 73 minus the question mark would be 4 times 7. So you can solve this in one of two ways. You can do it 24 plus 3 times 7, or um, 73 minus 4 times 7. So let's use the first method. 24 plus 3 times 7 is 21. 24 plus 21 equals 45. So therefore, option B, 45, is the right answer. The other options are incorrect. If you were to use the second method, 73 minus 28, you can compute that. The answer would still be 45. So 45 is the number that can replace the question mark in the following series. So the series, when completed, would be 3, 10, 24, 45, 73, and 108. Now that concludes this particular episode of Viti, Questions with Solutions. We hope you found this episode interesting and informative. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Brain Blitz Audios. We have various videos that are problem-solving videos for various examinations, and we also have other engaging content that you can visit. So until the next webisode, take care, stay safe, ta-ta for now.